Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing Josh's Bagel Book Tag. So this was created by Josh from Literary Gladiators, and I was tagged by Richardson Reads. There are 14 questions, and let's just go! Alright, question one, plain. A writer you feel does a great job with the same kind of work. So I would say Charles Bukowski, because... He does such a good job of writing about the kind of down and out sort of underclasses in America. Uh, like the, the whole American bum thing and like alcoholics and prostitutes and all. And you know that kind of section of society. And it doesn't matter whether he's writing fiction, non-fiction, a screenplay or whatever it is. That subject area just really suits him. He does a great job with it. Question number two. Everything. A writer in which you own every work. So... For me, that's Colin Dexter, the author of the Inspector Morse books. And he's not the author I own the most books by, or that I've read the most by, or anything like that. He's just the one with the most books that I have all of them, if that makes sense. Like Terry Pratchett, I think I have like 62 books or something, but he wrote like 75, so I don't have all of them. So yeah, we're going Colin Dexter. Question number three, Sesame. Your favourite Sesame Street or Muppets book? So I didn't know that Sesame Street or the Muppets did books. So I don't have an answer to this one. The closest I have for you is either Treasure Island or A Christmas Carol. Because the Muppets did movies of both of them. Question number four. Poppy, a short work that gives you an ecstatic high. Well, I think rather appropriately I've gone for Howl and Other Poems by Allen Ginsberg. So uh, yeah. One of the reasons it gives me an ecstatic eye is because I know one of the poems in there off by heart as well. Oops, dropped the book. Question number five, Salt. A good book you had to put down in order to catch yourself. So, I don't understand the question. So, I don't have an answer. Question number six, Garlic. A genre you just cannot get enough. I think there should be an of there, but we'll let it, we'll let it slip. I'm going for modern classics purely because I'm now on number 43 of the Penguin Mini Moderns. So clearly I cannot get enough. Question number seven. Onion. A book that may cause you to get stares but you enjoy it anyway. So this is actually an indie horror. Well, it's a collection of horror short stories. It's called Gristle and Bone by Duncan Ralston. And the reason it gets you stares is because it has a human heart on a plate on the front. That's, uh, I've read this on buses. I can confirm it gets you stares. Question number eight. Cinnamon Raisin, a sweet but thought-provoking work. So for me, that's got to be Albert Camus, Create Dangerously. It's actually two short essays in this, so Create Dangerously. Oh, no, there's three. Create Dangerously, uh, Bread and Freedom, and Defense of Intelligence. But specifically Create Dangerously, the essay. It gave me a lot of food for thought. It sort of kept me awake some nights thinking about that essay. Question number nine, French Toast. A writer you are happy to have discovered this past year. So for me, it's got to be John Steinbeck. I read Of Mice and Men earlier this year with Catalyst Reads, and I also read his edition of the Penguin Mini Moderns. Loved it, really enjoyed his writing style, and can't wait to read more of his stuff. Question number ten, Egg. It's not very vegan. A work of non-fiction that caused you to form or switch a position. Speaking of vegan... <laughs> Uh, Farmageddon, The True Cost of Cheap Meat by Philip Limbury with Isabel Oakeshott. I don't know if it caused me to switch posi- Well, it didn't cause me to switch position, really, but it, it just pushed me further along the kind of animal rights path, which I've always been interested in. And, uh, so yeah. Question number 11, Rainbow. An LGBTQIIA plus work that made you think. I have gone for Fallen Angels of Karnataka by Hans M. Hershey. Hans is an indie writer and um, basically this is like a, a, a young man whose who's lover dies and a rich Englishman, it says here, a rich Englishman offers him the chance to join him on a tour of the world. Harkon takes it, daring to believe that his dream is finally coming true, but at what price? And um, yeah, it, it just made me think in general, I think. There we go. Question number 12, Biali, Biali, Bi, Bi, well to me it just looks Biali, like Bile. Question number 12, Biali, a fairy tale you feel people need to read in its original form, any Brothers Grimm story just because they're more brutal. Question number 13, what is your favourite kind of bagel as well as your favourite bagel condiment? So. 
I used to quite like the halloumi ones from the London Bagel, Co Bagel Company, uh, but I don't eat those now because I'm vegan, and I haven't had one since going vegan, so I don't know. Something with sun-dried tomato in, probably. And favourite condiment? Vegan mayo? Question number 14, bagel tray, who do you tag? So as usual, I'm going to tag some people who have recently commented on my videos, so we are going to go down the list. Uh, so I'm going to tag a mystery date with a book, Linda's world of books, beards and books, Jasmine's reads, Margaret the word nerd, Alex Black, weird reads, beautifully bookish Bethany, and Minx Laura one two three as well. So there we have it. On that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this tag. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.